Okay, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. The Health Information Management Information Session will begin shortly. Before we begin, I would ask that you please turn off your cameras and mute your microphones. This session is also being live streamed on Facebook. Today, faculty will share information about the HIM program, and at the conclusion, we will open the meeting for questions. You are welcome to type questions in the chat throughout the presentation. So let's get started. I would like to introduce Barbara Flock to begin sharing information about the HIM program. Thanks, Barbara. Hi, uh, as, as Lori mentioned, my name is Barbara Flock and I am the director of the HIM program. I've been on um, campus for, gosh, almost five years or a little over five years now and taught adjunct for about 10 years prior to that. And we wanted to give you this session to just kind of introduce you to the health information management program and tell you um, what you can learn from it. So uh, part of the beginning part is just, you know, meet the instructors. This is me. Uh, I graduated from Spokane Community College in 1995 with my AAS and I actually just finished my bachelor's degree online um, a year ago. So I, actually know what going to school online is like and, and that is very helpful to me in designing my classes and my program. I did work in industry for over 23 years, um, mostly in quality improvement, um, supervision, management, electronic health records, um, system design, development, that kind of stuff. Um, and then I joined SEC full-time to share my information with you. And I'll let Jill introduce herself. Sure, hi, welcome everybody. And my name is Jill Condon. I have been teaching here at SCC for about three years. I started here in 2017. And before that, I had over 33 years of experience out in the industry, all of which involved health information management, as well as a number of other revenue cycle um, management functions and ad registration admitting, um, just kind of a wide range of healthcare experience. So, I am so much enjoying bringing that to the classroom and teaching our future HIM professionals the, um, the work, what are you going to do, how it's done, what you can get excited about. So health information management, as maybe you're saying, well, what is health information management? It really just kind of in a nutshell is um, we actually take care of, instead of taking direct care of patients, we take care of the information about the patient. So collecting it, storing it, keeping it private, protecting it, making it usable for caregivers and others out in the healthcare industry. There's a wide range of pathways that a health information management professional can go. And that's what's so exciting about this profession. So thanks, I'm so glad to be here today. Thanks, Joe. So we wanted to give you a little information about the program. So this is a program where you actually get a degree. You get an Associates of Science in Health Information Management. And the special thing about our program is that we are an accredited program. And so you are able to test for the National Registered Health Information Technician Certificate when you're done with this program. This will allow you to work anywhere in the US and um, in most healthcare facilities. So that's kind of a big deal that we are an accredited program. We are online, so it's 100% online. We have very flexible scheduling. Um, I always like to tell the students that once you're in the program, I become your advisor and I'm the one you want to talk to, uh, or Jill. Uh, I kind of take you under, or we take you under our wings and we kind of just help you get through that program. So, you know, if, for some reason something happens and you're not able to take a full load one quarter then you call me and we figure it out and we you know make sure that you have the classes that you need to finish your degree eventually um and the same thing with if you're you know booking through it and everything's going good we we keep you on that track so quarterly we're touching in and we're making or touching base and making sure that you know your schedule is where it needs to be um, we do accept part-time and full-time students. I've had students who have started full-time and then have had a need to go part-time for whatever reason. Maybe they're having a baby or maybe they you know, need to go back to work for a little bit, whatever. The general rule of thumb is that you have to finish the program within five years of when you start. So you know, I just want to point out to you that that is 
a pretty flexible schedule that we can create for you. And, you know, we work with you hundred percent on how to, how to make that work for you. We like to meet you where you are. So another benefit to this program is that there's no prereqs. So we um, have built the entire program into the core of the curriculum that's needed to be taken. So we teach you what you need to know and you don't have to come in with prereqs or prerequisites classes. We do have what we call a cohort model, which is um, we have different starts to the program. So coming up, we're gonna have a fall start to the program and you will generally be with that group of students throughout your entire program. So you're gonna kind of get to know some people, even though it's online, we have a lot of discussion posts, we have a lot of presentation type work, we have some group work and you're gonna to get to know some people. So don't feel like just because you're online, you're gonna be isolated 100%. Um, so our starts that are planned are fall quarter, winter quarter and summer quarter. Uh, and it just depends on you know how many students we have registered and if we have enough to actually have a start. Our job placement is really quite excellent. Our RHIT exam pass rates, so that registered health information exam pass rates are in the high 80s and high 90s, um, depending on the cohort that goes through the class. All of that information is posted on our website. If you search health information management and click on the details page, you can see all of this information um, with our most recent exam pass rates. Same thing with student preparedness and student satisfaction. So we have we have souvenir or not souvenirs, I'm sorry, surveys that we ask our clinical supervisors and our industry professionals about how do you feel about the students being prepared when they come to your site, either for a clinical rotation or when they're hired. And we have 100% who say they are ready for entry level. Uh, work. So that's really good news. You know, I, I kind of feel good that we're teaching you what you need to know. And same thing with the student satisfaction. We have very high student satisfaction rates. So um, 90 percent, you know, very, very, very high uh, with the program and how they feel it was delivered. So just like to kind of bring that out for you. And I think Jill was going to go over the kind of average salaries and some of the AHIMA um, information and AHIMA, just so you know, is the American Health Information Management Association, and they are our national uh, model for health information management. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, thanks, Barb. So I'll just briefly touch on salaries in case anyone has any questions about what's the potential out there. So the information I'm sharing is from a survey in 2019 of over 3,000 health information management professional professionals all across the country. And these are people ranging from not certified entry level to those holding multiple certifications in this profession. And um, just to, when you talk about when we talk about roles and certifications, many of the job roles that were surveyed and responded to the survey are in revenue cycle management, coding, billing, um, collectors, benefits coordinators, auditors. There are also a large number of health information management operations folks. So those are health information technicians, um, meaningful use specialists, uh, release of information, cancer registrars, um, health information management supervisors, managers, and directors, and a lo lot of other roles. And then there's other types of roles that this program and this certificate will prepare you for, and that would be compliance, risk management, um, informatics, data analytics. And so these are the types of roles that were surveyed. So just we'll just touch real briefly. So since this program makes you eligible to test for the RHIT, the Registered Health Information Technici Technician Certificate, the average salary in that over 3,000 people that responded for entry level, so zero experience up to one year, was about $48,000, $49,000. That's average, so that's some are less, some are more. Um, and then overall, for all job roles, the average was a bit lower. So that includes those non-certified health information management professionals, and that was at $44,000. So the, the possibilities are really great when you start adding certifications. Of course, those average salary rates are going up. Um, kind of depends on where in the country you live or are working. Um, the Western states have the highest average salary. 
um, of all the professionals at, um, let me just share that, 87,000 is the average. So again, some less, some more. Um, and that includes all those ranges of experience from no experience up to over 30 years of experience. So I think it just really points out the possibilities with this program and being a health information management professional. Thanks. Thank you, Jill. We thought it would be helpful also to go through what would it look like uh, if you were going to go through classes here, you know, what kind of classes are you going to take and, and how does that look for you. So this is what is we call our two, or typical student schedule. It is also on the website. So if you go to scc.edu, um, you can find if you search health information management, you can find this schedule there as well. And the first quarter you would take HIM theory and practice, which is a introductory class. So it kind of just tells you all kinds of things about what is health information management. It's a great, just overall, let's try to understand what we're going to be doing here. You will we'll also take a medical terminology and anatomy class that's specifically geared for coding and abstraction in health information management. You're gonna take a two part series of this. So this would be the first class of that. And you will learn the medical terminology and all of the anatomy of the human body so that you're able to do your HIM work. The next class that you will take during that quarter is a computer applications in healthcare. So not only do we teach you how to do the Microsoft Office suite, so Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, that kind of stuff, we also go over all of those computer applications that we find specifically in healthcare and you know some of the details around that. When we get to second quarter, we talk a little bit about business correspondence. So how do I write an appropriate memo? How do I, how do I correspond with people in the business environment. We cover uh, legal concepts and health, which are those, those, um, you know, the privacy and the regulations and, you know, how do I keep this patient's information private? Um, how do I decide what is going to be released in, in whatever chart? How do I decide what is part of the chart? That kind of stuff. So we're going to be covering all of that kind of stuff um, you might be familiar with the term HIPAA, which is the privacy regulations for healthcare. We also will have you take that second class for the medical term, anatomy and coding. Um, and then you will take a class called electronic health records where we really focus primarily on how providers document in the chart. And then also what, what is our role with that electronic health record? You know, so it's all about like, how do you choose one? What is that interoperability? interoperability between different health systems, lots of the details about what we do in how those providers document in the electronic health record. And then you will take a bloodborne pathogen certificate. So, and what that does is just prepare you so that when you get to go out on your clinical bit or rotation in a healthcare facility, you're prepared with the bloodborne pathogen training. Third quarter, you will take a pathophysiology course, which is all about diseases of the human body. Everybody seems to love that course. Um, and it, you know, you just kind of learn about the disease process. Comparative health records is another class that will talk about the different record keeping and health information management techniques in different settings. So we're gonna be talking about long-term care, hospital, ambulatory care, um, dentist's office, prison systems, all kinds of stuff in there, and how those apply in different settings. Health data analysis and display is going to teach you about how to track those statistics and what we're going to do with those. We're going to talk about, you know, we're going to get into some information about inferential statistics and differential statistics and showing you how to report and do analytics for these providers and for decision making in healthcare. And then you will start your first coding class, which is acute care coding, and that is hospital coding. Jill, do you want to take the second screen? Sure. Okay, so um, fourth quarter, HIM 167, which can talk about current issues in HIM, which there's a wide range of areas where health information management um, impacts. And there is just keeping up current, what's going on in the industry, what is HIM's role? 
Um, what do we need to know? So telemedicine, for example, is a, a current, especially with COVID, we're get, we will dive into those, the, the current activities going on in this profession. The clinical preparation is, uh, Barb mentioned that you go out on a clinical in your last quarter. This really just prepares you for that to make sure that all the elements that are necessary are in place. You have your second um, coding class, which is ambulatory care coding, um, focusing on CPT coding, so physician office coding and other outpatient type settings. And then HIM217 is a, a new course that we've added to really beef up your understanding of statistical analysis for healthcare. It will um, play off the, the healthcare statistics course that you take earlier in the program. And this one really is just preparing you more for data analytics with which the, with the advent of health care records, electronic health care records, the statistical analysis of that data is getting to be more and more important and is certainly a skill that HIM professionals can do. Quality improvement in fifth quarter is, will focus on looking at uh, health information and how that information is used and analyzed to improve the quality of healthcare. And what is HIM's role in that? HIM does play a very important role in abstracting healthcare data and using that data to inform on improvement of healthcare. You have your third coding class, which is inpatient procedure coding, completely different code set that we teach you so that you're prepared for any sort of coding, coding role when you go out in the industry. And then uh, data analytics is again, a new course that we've added to focus on the use of actually pulling data from data sets, uh, using it, analyzing it, displaying it and presenting it and making decisions from it. So that's what that course will focus on. Pharmacology is a class that we um, is in the program so that you understand what medications are used for what conditions since you're learning in the other uh, courses about anatomy, physiology, diseases of the human body. This one is around medicines and medications that you will be reading when you read a medical record. You need to understand what they do. The clinical practice. Uh, so the last quarter, the sixth quarter is really getting you ready for your clinical as well as advancing your knowledge of revenue cycle management. So the clinical practice is simply just getting you ready for um, your preparing you to take that RHIT exam. Uh, we do mock exams in that class and prepare you for success to obtain your certification and be prepared for your clinical practice site, which actually is the HIM clinical seminar. So we do require students to participate in a clinical experience. So hands-on clinical experience um, out in the work site. Now, this last spring quarter, we had to adjust that a little bit. We did those virtually. So we, we do have some flexibility, but this is really the opportunity to get out into a business and industry a facility and see what it's really like hands-on and start to apply what you've learned. HIM 216 is a course that focuses on reimbursement strategies in all those various settings that, that you've learned about. So hospitals, ambulatory care, physician offices, home health, long-term care, and understand what reimbursement models there are and begin to understand the language and calculation of those reimbursement models. HIM professionals often are involved in, in reimbursement um, and need to have some understanding of those reimbursement models. So that's really kind of run through of your second year of the program. And again, as Barb mentioned early on, um, if you're full-time, this is what it looks like. If you're part-time, we work through what your schedule will look like. All right, thanks, Joe. Yeah. So the next section of this presentation, we're going to move into just some, some information from students who have attended this program. And the first person I have is Kelly Leslie, who is actually here online with us. Kelly, if you'll show your camera, thank you. You were on top of it. I'm proud to say that Kelly just passed her RHIT exam. So kudos to you. And so we've got her listed as an RHIT candidate because she's, of course, got to send her transcripts to prove that she's passed the program. And I can guarantee she did. So um, 
Kelly, if you would share some of your experience with us, that'd be great. Oh, wait, you're muted, Kelly. All right, can you hear there. me now? <laughs> I can hear you. Thank you. All right. Um, well, I am a new graduate. I just graduated this spring from, um, and I've been taking the, um, the HIM program for the last two years. And I wanna talk a, a quick bit about my previous experience. I had worked 15 years prior in healthcare and um, finance and human resources. So, so I was a little familiar with HIM stuff and I was ready for a career change. And I was really looking for something that I could work from home. So I was looking at coding as one of the possibilities. And then I seen this program and it gave you a lot more opportunities besides just coding. There was a lot of other things that seemed interesting to me, analytics to um, clinical documentation improvements, um, compliance, all kinds of other things. So I thought, well, let me take this program because maybe something else will be an interest to me besides just coding. Um, so anyways, the SEC was a great fit for me because it was all online. I live pretty remote. Uh, way up north in, um, in Washington State. So it worked out great for me. Um, the one thing that was really good about the program too, as Barb and Jill can attest to, is that um, our instructors are really available to you. I mean, they do recorded tutorials, which are convenient where you can listen to them whenever you want or listen to them again, again, however many times you need to, but also they're available by email, by phone and by Zoom. So I've personally have talked to them on numerous occasions when I was just confused and, and it was simple. Then when we got together and you know, it was easily fixed. So that worked really well for me. Um, the other thing that was really helpful is um, naturally I'm kind of a procrastinator and to be in this program, you've got to be pretty scheduled and pretty vigilant and to keep track. And they have some great software of calendars and stuff that you know where you're at and what things are due. And there's different prompts and stuff that kind of help me keep on track. So I really appreciated that a lot. Um, the other benefit of this is um, a lot of these classes, you, like Barb said earlier, you're with a group of HIM students and you kind of follow through the system with them. And you become friends with some of them. And, but also there's some students from other parts of accounting and other stuff that maybe you take classes together. So I've made, I would say some lifetime friends. There's a couple in particular that I've become really friends with. And we're, and even though we're graduate and we're done, we're still in connection with each other. So that was really benefit. So even though it's online, you're not totally by yourself. And that was really helpful. Um, during some of the classes that actually was a lot of team projects that brought you together with different people. And sometimes that could be difficult, but actually it was really, really a good learning experience for me. And that's where I met these long time, time friends now. So that's been great. And they were really good study buddies. So that turned out really, really nice. Um, the other thing that was fantastic is when you got down to the internship, and this year was a challenge, I know, for Barb and everybody to get this set up because of COVID. Um, we were all signed up to do different sites. And because of COVID, then everybody couldn't do that anymore. So we had to, you know, they had to think outside the box, do virtual or whatever. And I know Barb went out of her way to really match us all up with really good sites and different things. So I was able to actually still um, have an internship off-site with the place and it was such a good fit and actually it's turned out that I've got some career opportunities with them so there's a really high chance for some of these people when you do internship that you're going to get hired by them and and that's been fantastic it was so positive it was it was just I can't even say enough about that um, the other thing about the program is you know, you're taking all these different classes for a couple of years and you get down the end and you're thinking, what have I learned? Have I really learned anything? Can I take the test? Am I going to pass? Oh my God. But I'll tell you, I just took my certification exam last week and I did well. I passed on the first try and I knew a lot more than I thought I knew. So it, it, it says a lot about the instructors and the whole curriculum and how it comes through full circle. At first, when you're taking stuff, you, sometimes you're not understanding why you're doing that, but at the end you do. It makes sense, it all ties back in together. So that was excellent. So I'm waiting for my certification from AHIMA and I've got my RHIT 
now. And now I'm just waiting. I'm going to be taking my coding classes. So I'm going to continue on and do my CCS, my CCSP coding. And I'm looking at maybe continuing on to get my RIA, my RHIA maybe. So it's Yay. awesome. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> because it's, um, it, it, you know, it's not an easy course. You have to work. You have to work at it. But it's very fulfilling. And I can see a long career here. Like I said, I've already got some offers um, to do things. And um, so I have some choices here. So it's, I can't say enough. So I loved it. It's good. Thank you, Kelly. And congratulations on the offers. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, I have a few others that I had actually asked to, to join us and they couldn't uh, join us on the call because they're actually working. So they have provided some statements here and I can read these to you. Joan Rimes is an RHIT. She graduated in 2019. And as her statements are saying, she's currently working as a tumor registry assistant while taking coursework to become a certified tumor registrar. So that's another thing that you can do. And this is, this is all about cancer statistics and tracking cancer uh, rates and things along those lines. The HI program at SCC provides a great deal of context to what I do. It helps me understand coding, EHR use, patient privacy issues, facility organization, and hierarchy, among many other things. I had a background in the field of pathology as a working person, but the HIM program helped put it all together for me. The online format was perfect for my situation. I worked full time while in this program, and I even worked in two different cities out outside of my hometown during the two years. That's something I couldn't have done without a program like SCCHIM. What stood out for me in this program was how well it was organized. I always knew the next step and how to fit into where I was currently in the program. More importantly, I liked and admired my instructors. Oh, they were invested in our success and they were good teachers. I might mention that I'm an older student. I started the program at 54. And this was a career change for me after 33 years in another field. It was a scary transition, but SEC made it less scary. The program equipped me well for this next professional chapter in my life. I wish all the new HIM students well. There are a lot of great opportunities awaiting you. The next one is Carissa Spence. She was actually in Kelly's class. She is an RHIT as well. She finished in 2020. And uh, just a quick statement from her, the HIM program at Spokane Community College provided the perfect learning environment. I needed a program that offered a remote educational experience as I live out of state, as well as a flexible class schedule. Working around a current job and family, it was imperative that I find a program I could work around. SCC's program provided an in-depth course, er, coursework that prepared me for the RHIT exam and ever-changing healthcare industry as a whole. The instructors in the program were incredible and available for any questions I had throughout the time in my program. Sarah Burtis is the next person. Um, she graduated in 2019, was a working professional as well during the time that she went through our program. If you're thinking about pursuing a career in health information management, then I would highly recommend the HIM program at Spokane Community College as a full-time working mom. The online program made things a lot easier. With my hectic schedule, although I'm a visual learner, the, context of, or the content of the material and the way the classes were set up made my learning a lot easier than I imagined. The program could not have had better instructors. <laughs> Barb and Jillian and the rest of the team were always approachable and knowledgeable with any questions I had regarding the material. They also got back to any inquiries that I had within a reasonable amount of time. What I would really like to highlight is their emphasis on the RHIT certification. I'm not a very good test taker, and I passed my RHIT on the first attempt. I was really thankful for the material that was provided leading up to the exam and the class itself that went over the exam. And another one from Jennifer Hoyt, who graduated in 2019, and she actually has come back and helps us with tutoring our HIM program. That's something I forgot to mention. We do have an online tutor available, so we do um, part-time. HIM tutor. So you have access to Jill and I as instructors. And then we also have somebody that's gone through this program and is now a working professional in the field who um, jumps online and works with students. And she usually does that in the evenings and on weekends so that she can be available for those students. I'm sorry. If I could describe the health information management program offered by Spokane Community College in one phrase, it would be the best decision of my life. 
the HIM program at Spokane Community College was the best career decision I ever made. Midlife, I found myself rejoining the workforce. Voice, workforce. With HIM classes online, I was able to work and go to school simultaneously. After graduation, I accepted a position at the facility where I performed my clinical. Within a year, I have now transferred to a supervisor in training position. The education and support you receive through the HIM program at SEC offers is by far top notch, providing you the tools needed for success. And so um, that's just some of our students that have graduated and have gone through the program. Um, a lot of people responded and said they'd love to uh, give some feedback. We do have, you know, a lot of these guys were working professionals, but we also have people that were not working and they um, might have had kids at home or maybe they were done having kids and just wanted another education and that's okay too. Uh, we have a whole gamut of people. So just wanted to bring that out to you. And next we wanted to kind of give some perspective from the industry. So people that are actually out there working and taking our students and what do they think about that? So Nancy, if you're still here, I'm sure you are. Um, if you want to turn on your camera and visit with us, that'd be great. There we go. Okay, so now I'm unmuted. So that was perfect. So I am Nancy Screen. I am the HIM manager at St. Luke's Rehab Institute. Um, I actually have a, a small department, but it's a, a, a very, very vibrant department, and we do just a whole lot of things. Um, right now, I see, oversee the entire revenue cycle management uh, team, which includes billers and coders and HIM professionals that do release information, chart analysis. We also do credentialing, which is what the physicians need to be able to um, practice at our facility. They have to you know, complete a whole lot of papers and packets and things like that um, and pass it, you know. A, a board, you know, exam with between the physicians that approve them to be able to practice here. So our our department is very very busy. We do a lot of different things, um, and I would actually re reiterate what Kelly had said earlier. We've hired um, HIM students into my department, been very very happy with them, and you can look at that internship as a three week job interview because it you, you can really show people what you what you're made out of. And if a job opening is either available or if something comes up, it's a great opportunity to be able to kind of, you know, see what that, see if it's a good fit for you, and then they can see if you're a good fit for them. Um, what I noticed about the HIM program at, at SEC was that there is not a class that is in that listing that I don't use every single day. I use data, I use coding, I use medical terminology, I use anatomy and physiology, I use the legal aspects, and so does my team. And so the classes that you will take in this program are incredibly valuable as far as preparing you for what you're gonna be doing every day in, in, in your job. Um, we you know, like to, you know, it, it offers a lot of variety because you're not always doing the same thing every day. So, you know, it's not like a factory job where you come in and repeat everything over and over again. You have to think on your feet. Um, we appreciate people who are have an attention to detail and um, and want to do a good job because you're handling people's medical information and that then that's important stuff. So even though you aren't touching a patient, you are touching a patient, but just in a different kind of a way. All right. Thank you, Nancy. Mm -hmm. And I think I think I, I love your comment about there's just so many things that you can do because it, it is just such a broad field. So that's that's a great thing to note. So if students are interested in joining the program, we have a few next steps for you. So if you've had previous classes, there are possibly some classes that we could set out for you, just depending on what the classes are and how they look. So the first thing would be to contact our counselor, Megan. And she can be reached at the following email address. I think we'll have some information up for you afterwards as well. And she can talk with you and help you decipher which credits will transfer. And then she'll contact me, the program director, and let me know what classes you need to take. You know, if there's anything that's questionable, she might contact me and say, hey, Barb, can you accept this or not? Uh, we, we do a lot of communication uh, back and forth about things. After making contact with Megan, you'll go to the Spokane Community College website and you'll wanna uh, apply to become a student here if you are not already a student. Uh, you can 
once you do that, you can register online. And if you have any questions during the registration process, you can contact our registration guru, Tito Ellis, who's actually on the line with us at this point in time. And so is Megan as well. And uh, you can, and he can help you through all of those steps. And then of course, if you have specific questions about the program, you can contact myself or even Jill, you know, not even Jill, of course, Jill as well. Uh, we both can answer any questions that you might have and we would love to visit with you. Uh, Megan or Tito, do you have anything to add to that? Nope. <laughs> Thanks, Tito. <laughs> um, you, you guys covered everything, so I'm, I'm good. All right. Uh, I think we're ready to move into the question and answer session. Lori, is, do you want to take it from here? Sure. So far, we've had a question on Facebook. And the question was, are the students online and how many are in the program? So at any given time, we have around, I would say, 75 to 100 students in the program. But as because our schedule are, is so flexible, we they're at lots of different phases within the program. So I have some students that are going to be joining us starting fall. And then I have other ones that just graduated in spring. And then I have a whole cohort, or not even, I have several cohorts of them who are in different quarters of the program. So it really just depends. But generally about 75 to 100 students total um, that we're managing at one time. Um, and yes, the program is 100% online, but like we said, it is definitely um, a person to person program. It's not, you're not on a computer all the time. You're, you're on the phone, you're on Zoom, you're on email with us quite a bit when you have questions. And I think if I could just add real quickly, sorry Beth, we talked about the cohort model that our program is. So you will actually start with a group of students in a cohort. And those cohorts are typically 15 to 30 students. And um, you may go through the whole program with many of those same students, or as Barb just described as some tend to either go part-time or um, then, you know, some of those may drop out, but a cohort typically is around 15 to 30. So that's, that's typically what you would start with. Thanks, Jill, for that clarification. And Barbara, I think you showed it on earlier slides, but um, per quarter, is it about 15 credits per quarter? So three classes a quarter, roughly? Yeah, roughly three. Um, actually, you know, to be honest, the average is really around four per quarter, the classes per quarter, but roughly 15. Uh, we do have one quarter that's 18 credits, uh, but you know, that's if you're going full time. Okay, great. And then since this is 100% online, what is the best way for a student to be um, prepared at home, especially with students that might be having children at home at the same time? Um, could you give a little bit about that? And maybe is it a, you know, is a desktop preferred? Is it a laptop? Um, what kind of a space should be set up to uh, be successful? Oh, I can tell you all about that. Um, with COVID, I've actually been at home working as well. Uh, you're going to definitely want a space that you can concentrate at certain times. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, a room all to itself. It could be right there in, in the corner of your living room, just a place where you can sit and you can look at your classwork and your homework. And I, I actually did that. It was in the side of my living room. And um, that's where I studied for all my exams. And that's where I teach from now. Uh, when I need to. You want a desktop computer or a laptop. I would not recommend a Mac just because we've had lots of issues with the software that we use here on students being able to take tests effectively and efficient, efficiently using a Mac. However, if you already have one, um, there are definitely workarounds. But if you're going out to get one, I would definitely recommend a Lenovo um, computer or a Dell. Uh, you can have a desktop or a laptop. It's, it's nice to have a scanner because there's many times where you are maybe printing something out and, and of course a printer, um, but you're signing documents and sending them back to us because we actually have to have signatures on some of the stuff. Uh, but again, if you have a smartphone, there's ways around that as well. Um, a printer for sure. And you want to have good internet connection or as good as you can get. You know, we have worked with several people in rural areas whose 
whose internet connection is a bit slower. And it, it and Kelly, maybe you can talk to this, Kelly Leslie, if you're still on, um, how your internet connection works up there. I don't recall that you had a ton of problems with it, but if you, if you are able to, you're gonna to wanna to have kind of a high speed internet connection. I don't see me. She, she might have left. Is she there still? Well, Kelly is maybe getting off mute. I, I might add that if you're new to online learning, we actually in our program, in a, we have an orientation where we include a section on are you prepared for online learning. So it takes you through an assessment um, and talks about um, maybe just some of the organization some of the tools and what you might need to do to be better prepared for online learning. So we, we do have some resources to help you um, assess where you are in that and help you get to a place that is going to make it easier for you. Thanks, Joe, for that. And, you know, just to tag on to that, we um, this this orientation that you have available to you is available to you through the entire program. So, you know, it, it's a lot of information and it has tons of stuff there. But if you are having troubles with test taking or if you're having troubles with studying or whatever, it's that real time information that you can go back to and you can review at that time, you know, when things come up. So it's an orientation quote class that is available to you throughout the entire program. And I see Kelly's on. Yeah. So, uh, Kelly, can I really we talk to your internet? I, I really never had um, much issues with the internet having trouble. Sometimes I had some stuff with my computer itself with some of the testing, but I had a backup laptop that I could get on there and, and do that. That might be something interesting to tell people how you do the, the exams and stuff because it's real easy, convenient. Yeah. But I never had a problem. Yeah. So our exams are, they're online and um, they're offered through, we call it lockdown browser. So students have to actually go in through this special web browser basically to get into the exam. And what it does is it locks it down. So you can't go search any other websites and you can't, you know, look at other things. It actually turns the camera on. So um, we can watch you take the exam as well. And, you know, there have been issues at different times and the thing to remember about that is that everything's time stamped. So, you know, if a student, you know, something happens and they lose their connection during that time that they're taking the exam, we as instructors can see that. And, you know, we're, we're reasonable folks. So, you know, if a student will contact us and say, hey, I lost my internet connection during this exam or something along those lines, you know, we can reset that for you. It's not, we have a pretty good system where we can do that. So it's, it's, it's really not anything to be afraid of, I guess. The other comment I would say since the question asked specifically about being in school while having children at home who are also in school and being online is the way we've set up the program is we don't have very rarely, if ever, a time when you have to be um, at a certain place or online at a certain time. We set due dates, you know, so exams and assignments are due on a certain day by 11.59 at night, you can complete that at any point up to that due date. So if you are a student who has children at home who are online using your computer and you can't do your homework at noon, you aren't going to be required to be in a Zoom class at noon unless you've made an appointment to do so. Um, so I think it, it the way we've structured the program is you have flexibility to do your work at a different time when your kids are doing their work online at home as well. So maybe that addresses that specific part of the question, Lori, that you had. That does help. Thank you, Jill. Yeah. Megan, would you like to join in and um, introduce yourself and then let us know when the first day of fall quarter starts? Okay, hey, am I unmuted now? <laughs> you are good, thanks. Great, so um, I'm Megan Fadley and I'm the academic counselor that um, works with the HIM students and um, with Barb and Jill, so thank you for having me today. Um, just wanting to let you know that 
classes start on September 21st. And so there is still time if you're interested in getting rolling for this program, we can still get you through that process and in classes in time for fall quarter. Um, and as far as accessing our services, you know, this is an online program and I can still meet with you um, through Zoom or through phone appointments, kind of whatever works best for you, but we are accessible um, in that online format. So you don't have to come to campus to meet with anyone to work through your questions. Um, a lot of the things that have been mentioned here are really helpful. And, you know, as far as figuring out how to balance all of this and, you know, if you have kids in school and trying to work through the program yourself, just remember also that, you know, besides the academic counseling, we also have supportive counseling services. Um, and that can range from things just to help with time management. Um, it can talk about, you know, stress management and things like that. So um, we are there to support kind of their whole process through SCC, not just the academics, but kind of the, the personal and the, the whole person aspect as well. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me and I'd love to meet with you. Thank you, Megan. And just to remind everyone that we do have wonderful online services to support you through student services, as Megan mentioned. We also have library support through laptops and Wi-Fi hotspots that we're able to check out to students throughout the quarter. If that is a concern, you can definitely reach out to the faculty, counseling, Tito, or the library, and we can help you connect with those technical resources. So. Barbara, I don't have any other questions. I don't know if you have that last screen that we can put up for a little bit. And then we will just invite anyone with questions to contact us at SCC, contact Barbara, Jill, Tito, or Megan. And we thank you for joining us this afternoon.